Chris Heidel from Herbertson Radio in Baltimore. Um, last year, you guys had a tough season, you know, up and down. What do you guys got to do to get better? Because I know a lot of Miami fans mm -hmm. see excellence in Miami and they want mm -hmm. Miami to be great like years ago. What do you guys mm -hmm. got to do to turn that page? Sure. Well, first of all, good morning. Thank you for having us here. Obviously, a great setup and appreciate you guys having us. And it's an honor to be here with these three guys because relative to your question, it starts with that right there, elite people that are elite athletes and that hold really, really high standards. So I think um, whenever you start up at a program again and, and it has a rebuilding aspect, um, you have to sometimes go through a season like that and not make any excuses or sugarcoat it, but you go directly at the things that need to be addressed. And it starts with people, people in the locker room, people in, on the coaching staff, people in a support staff role. And what we feel that we have done is that we have uh, added some elite components in the personnel department, uh, some unique additions, you know, at the line of scrimmage, outside on the perimeter, you know, in the secondary, at linebacker. Um, I felt like our culture, led and driven by our team leaders, has created ownership in our program. In other words, the steps that you cannot skip, those things have been in full force since the end of last season, and it's led to a great off season, a great uh, signing day class, the best in our school's history, uh, a top 10 portal class. Most importantly, the retainment of our top players and top leaders led to a great spring and now has had a great summer. So now we're, we're eager to get to camp so we could put all that to good use. And bottom line is just to get to work, not worry about anything or anyone and just get to work and put to good use this hard work that we have done. Coach, stay on the right side. Gentleman in the red shirt, fourth row. Kenton Gibbs with Locked On ACC. Coach Chris Ball, you've had as many as uh, four players mocked as first round draft picks in the upcoming draft. And the question becomes, because Miami has always had great players coming through, how do you materialize that talent into success and wins that are on pace with your and Miami fans' expectations? Well, absolutely. Well, I think it always starts and ends with personnel. So. You know, we don't pay much attention to the mock draft stuff, but we also at the same time make sure that any type of publicity and brand enhancement that we can have for our players, we emphasize. That's important. So uh, there's no question that we do have some really talented young men that are working really hard and we're surrounding them with more and more and more. And when Miami looks a certain way, the locker room is littered with that caliber of player and person and then also littered with a coaching staff that knows how to put personnel to good use, put guys in the right positions to make plays, making sure that we're teaching at a high level, that the onus of learning the system is as much on the player as it is a coach by doing it together. So it's as simple as that. And you know, our track record, we've had great success developing some guys to really high levels to go on and, and, and play long careers in the NFL that's certainly a huge part of our goals as well as the academic component and graduating with a big time diploma from Miami. Coach left side, third row. Hi coach, uh, Mason Horodesky with WHAS in Louisville. It was announced yesterday that you guys in the cards are gonna be playing for the Schnellenberg Trophy going forward. Yes, Just wanna get your thoughts on that game, mm -hmm. what Coach Schnellenberg maybe means to you and what it means yeah. playing for that trophy. I love Coach Schnellenberger. I was recruited by him. My brother was recruited by him. He spent many, many days, nights at the house recruiting us. Uh, I'm more fond of the pipe than the boots, quite honestly. But I think it's the right type of honor to honor Coach Schellenberger, what he did for the University of Miami, what he's done for the University of Louisville, what he represents in terms of football. He made the game better. Uh, he was a great man. Often uh, we refer to him uh, a good amount of times and he is just a significant contributor to the game of football and our community so uh, we're we're honored to have the opportunity to honor him coach to your right side follow the aisle up the middle sir if you'll please stand and ask your question hey coach this is joey palermo wqu 90.9 the light uh you mentioned earlier about the new miami culture in particular uh, what do, you have a lot of student athletes that have transferred to Miami this year. Uh, what have you seen from them and how have they kind of adapted to this culture from practices and the spring game up to this point? Sure, no, that's a really good question. I think what, what makes this roster work well is that the blend. The blend is the right percentages of the different kinds of roster makeup components. By that I mean you have some seasoned veterans that have been here 
okay, that I've seen a lot of football, played a lot of football. You have an elite freshman class where some guys are going to be able to contribute and be impactful members on the field while others continue to develop. And then you have some seasoned, experienced transfer portal guys that have joined our team um, that I, these guys can tell you more than anything. The transitions have been seamless because we've been very open and honest from the beginning that we are building and rebuilding. Uh, we didn't sell any lofty expectations or any, you know, um, any BS dreams. We were very real about it. And when you do that and you're introduced to the level of work that these guys are introduced to, it works well. The mentality, um, the fact that every position has legitimate competition, uh, and the level of work ethic that these guys and the guys that have come in have all put together, it's a really good combination. And it's uh, the diversity of the locker room as well. It's almost a reflection of our city, Miami, right? You see every, every, every color, ethnicity, uh, you see it all. And you see that on our team in terms of their backgrounds, in terms of the different ways they got to Miami. Um, but with one thing in common, they, they like to work and they are driven. They are internally driven and self-motivated. And it's been fun and exciting watching these guys work. I think they understand that the secret is out there in the dirt to get their hands dirty and put in time and put in effort. So I look forward to watching these guys get to work here in fall camp. Coach, left side, fourth row towards the wall. Hey, Coach, Tony Syracuse from Last Word on Sports. Do you have intentional thoughts on how much you want to rely on the portal versus how much you still want to rely on high school recruiting? And is that different for you at Miami than it was when you were at Oregon? Very different. You know, never really used the portal much, if at all, at, um, at the previous stop at Oregon. But the rules have changed, and you have to adapt. And there's so many different ways to fill your roster now, right? There, there are players overseas or some up in Canada junior college players, high school players, transfers, sometimes guys in, in, your, in your athletics department that are playing other sports could make the jump and become good football players. So we're always looking for ways to make our roster as good as it can be. And so I, I hate to put a cap on it, um, but you know the, the importance of high school recruiting is still gonna be at the forefront. I mean, player development and that word development always has to be an important and a sacred word when it comes to football. And I'll tell you why is football is a developmental sport. Okay. And there's a lot to be said and a lot of value in putting in time and effort to develop into a great person, a great player, an accountable and trustworthy teammate. And we don't want to stray from those principles and values. And at the same time, recognize that sometimes you have opportunities. One of them sitting up here on stage today, of a guy that can come in and make a tremendous impact, um, but he already has those principles and values and has put in that time. So at the end of the day, they all kind of meld together, but just different pathways have been used to get here. We've got about six minutes left with Coach. Coach, to your right side, gentleman with his hand in the air. Coach Cristobal, Jesse Coger from plantandspear.com. You bring in a new offensive coordinator this year, mm -hmm. and can you just speak on what the bringing in Coach Dawson, what his new offense will do to unlock uh, Tyler Van Dyke's skill set that we've seen in the past? Yeah, I think what Shannon Dawson has done in his history really fits Tyler, his skill set, the pieces around them. It gives us the opportunity to enhance the supporting cast. Um, the bolstering of the offensive line with, you know, not only the addition of Matt and, and Javion and, and the return of a healthy um, offensive line in Inez Cooper and a Jalen Rivers. And then, you know, we all know, we've heard about the heralded freshmen that we have and the expectations on them. I think that's a great combination. You know, Shannon Dawson has led some really uh, high level offenses over the course of his career, uh, really understands the importance of the timing and spacing and precision of the passing game and has gotten the ball in the hands of his best players. And he's been a hit. You know, he's been a guy that our team instantly recognized that, man, this guy's not only is he a really good coach, he's a really good person. We can connect here. And, um, and probably one of the best things, and I think this is important to say because Miami's always been really, really good, but Miami was filled with people that really want to be at Miami. And Shannon Dawson, he, he views the Miami job as that job. Lance Skid reviews the Miami job as that destination spot. So uh, we're thrilled to have them. They've certainly made a tremendous impact so far. 
and we look forward to him continuing to evolve his offense and working with our players. And I think um, well, I'll let Tyler expand on his feelings on the offense when you guys get him up here. Stay on the right side, returning to the third row. Hey, Coach. It's Chris Heidel from Herbert in Baltimore. So let's talk about your transfer uh, offense alignments from Alabama. How great are they to, in addition to your team? Yeah, large human beings, right, that move things, you know, a long ways. javion has got a lot of experience, um, certainly has played at a high level, one of the better linemen uh, when he was playing in the SEC. And then a guy like Matt, you know, again, arguably the best and not one of the best centers in, uh, in the country who is looking to enhance his game. I think he's, well, I hate to put you out there, 20 pounds, how much weight, something like that. He still fits in the suit, so that's good. But, you know, he's really... He's worked really hard along with the rest of the guys to change their bodies and enhance their game. He wanted to be challenged at the highest level. Um, these guys, they, you can push them and you can work hard because there's several goals that come with this. Your team, being a great teammate, being a great player, having a great team, great offense, dominant offensive line. One day play in the NFL, but not just get to the NFL, stay in the NFL. And it's, you couldn't ask for a better group of transfer portal offensive lineman than what we were able to be blessed to have.